age of 19 years old by herself and because of the fact that my mother never asked anyone for permission to pursue her dreams, that within one generation, I stand before you as Vice President of the United States. So President Biden and I are fighting to secure a pathway for citizenship, including for dreamers and families, and to make our immigration system more orderly and humane. We will also raise the federal minimum wage. We will invest in affordable housing, affordable child care, and paid family leave. And when we fight, we win. president's candidacy, but also as a tremendous, you know, thank you to the president. 
for the incredible leadership that he showed um, and the incredible work that he and the vice president were able to accomplish together because we know that they have created a strong record for us to run on and to be able to win on um, because we've you know seen elections since the midterms and so many special elections just continue to really you know show the strength the power of um, our democratic party our democratic base and of latinas and latino voters across the country and um you know at the headquarters we have a quote up from um the vice president's mother i know you mentioned she's a daughter of immigrants but her, her mother had many sayings and she oftentimes shares um, them but one of her sayings was you may be the first to do many things but you better make sure you are not the last and that is the kind of you know energy value spirit she is coming into this work with to help to you know not just um, be able to step into an incredible role as president of the united states but really to pave a path forward for so many people throughout our country throughout our communities and to continue to really show that she is a fighter for the people and to continue to deliver and just you know a couple of things um, in terms of the impact that her and the president have been able to make they've created 4.4 million jobs for latinos um, cut childhood poverty for latinos in half um, when they initiated the child tax credit invested you know 15 billion dollars in hispanic serving institutions continued to address um, you know affordable health care and lowering prescription drug costs you know the list goes on and on but as Maria mentioned, I've had the honor of working with the vice president now um, for several years since she was a senator in the state of California. And there is no one stronger and more equipped uh, to be able to prosecute the case against Donald Trump. We've already seen her out on the campaign trail in Milwaukee, in um, Indianapolis earlier today, and we're gonna continue to make sure she hits all of our battleground states because y'all, we have uh, 103 days left until election day and people start voting well before then. So we have our work cut out for us, but no doubt the kind of energy enthusiasm that we're seeing will ensure that we get over the finish line and that we win in November. We've already raised $126 million since she has become our candidate and become at the top of the ticket. 100,000 um, folks have signed up for volunteer shifts for our weekend of action this weekend. Um, and we want you all to be a part of this incredible team. So you all can join us and join Latinos Con Kamala um, and get involved and get engaged with our campaign. We have so many different opportunities to plug folks in um, to in-person events, to online organizing, um, because as the vice president reminds us, when we fight, we win. So thank you so much, Maria, and back over to you. Thank you so much, Julie. And again, congratulations, Hermana. And we are here for you. We are here for the Vice President. You just say the word and uh, let us know whatever you need. We are in it to win it with her. So thank you again, Julie. We know you, you have go have a campaign to run. So bless you, sister. Te queremos mucho. Thank you. Um, okay, I am now thrilled to welcome my fearless co-host, uh, Maria Teresa Kumar, who has joined us. Maria Teresa, I'm going to hand it over to you so you can hand it over to our next speaker. Well, thank you so much, Maria. And I have to say, it's so thrilling to be here. Hearing Julie's energy and her excitement, I, I mean, I've known Julie for forever, and, this, and her trajectory has been amazing, but it's because she always knows how to pick the candidates, right? She worked so closely with President Obama. She was a confident in President Obama. She went on the campaign trail, rolled up her sleeves and said, you know what, let's do work with Kamala Harris. She ended up with the Biden administration, but back again in the trenches. And it's someone that I really admire. And I have to say, I am so excited. But yeah, we have three point we have 3,300 people, and we've been on this call for less than 11 minutes. Amazing. I kind of feel like we're going to be dialing for dollars, everyone. Amazing. Uh, but we're getting, I mean, we're getting people saying, let's get let's get crews out. Saludos from Houston. Shout out there from Jackie Bastard. I don't know you, but I like your last name. I think it's awesome. <laughs> uh, we have Alexandra Watson. Everyone, thank you guys for joining us, because our hope is, is to make this something that is ongoing. And I will tell you that the fierceness in the room when we were getting the RSVPs, right, Maria? Was oh, Katie, right? Like incredible. It was, it was really, really neat. And I a shout out to Ingrid and 
Catherine, because when you call me, I can never say no. So thank you. <laughs> um, right there, that's exactly right. Really good boozy <laughs> drinks. I should have done boozy, um, but, but but next time. Uh, so with that, I have to welcome one of our dearest friends in the movement. The next person I'm going to introduce you to. I she was a key legislator in the California delegation when I was in college, and she was the first woman and first person that I know of, that I remember, Maria, who put climate justice on the map through yes. the lens of the Latino community. She made California change her standards, and she didn't stop there. She ended up being a congresswoman for a very long time and went to the highest echelons of being a cabinet secretary as, as, uh, as labor. If anybody can guess who I'm about to tee up, put it in the chat right now. Um, and she said, you know what? That's not enough. I want to go back and serve my community. And so she now is in Los Angeles representing so many people so well because she has the bona fides. But more importantly, she recognizes, just like the campaign recognizes, that power is met locally. And so with that, I would like to welcome a, a mentor, a counselor, someone that I greatly admire, an incredible leader in our community, Hilda Solis. Oh, all yours. Maria, thank you. To both of the Marias, Cardona and you, and also to Catherine and Ingrid and Nidhi Velasquez. Oh my God, you guys are the girlfriends. You are the bad asses. And we should be proud of it because Latino, Latinas rock. I'm so happy that you are putting this together. I love Julie Rodriguez. My God, I mean, we have all come a long way here, but we know what we have to do. The fight is just starting. We know that. You know, our candidate now, who's going to be our next president, a woman, an immigrant, a Latina, not Latina, but I feel like she is, <laughs> only because she represented California so well. She fought for environmental justice. She also took on the big corporations, and she's ready to take on the biggest predator that we know, and I know that she's going to be able to do it right, but we need to have more people helping, especially from people from our state in California. We're typically viewed as a donor state, so send your money and go campaign in Nevada, Arizona, and all these places, those of you that can afford it, and let's put money in, and let's make sure that we have, that we give credit to the Latinas. Latinas are in fact the fastest growing small businesses around the country, no doubt about it. But guess what? Our familias are hurting. We need to be thinking mindfully how we're going to continue that safety net that Biden so successfully put forward, helping us through COVID, making sure that we have affordable housing and then also we have a future for our students. You know, reducing that, that debt, but also creating good jobs. And not everyone's going to go to college, but let's make sure that these organizations don't rip off our students and make sure we have a cabinet that is reflective of our community. Biden set the standard. Now we need to ask. We need to have that again for us and continue the fight. Dale ganas, si se puede. And I'm totally on board. Having worked and fought for Harris to be a senator, I know what it's going to take. She's there, and we can do it. Trump is just that, the, the carrot head. We're going to take him on, and she's going to do, she's going to do an excellent job. But we need, the, we need all of the Latinas across the country to be standing up, get our community motivated. Guess who's the most powerful person in the household in our communities? La, the Latinas. So let's get to work. Thank you so much. And I appreciate all of you. Send your money, send your checks, and let's get working. Comadres, let's do it. Thank you so much, Hilda. And you and I go way back. I don't even remember, but yes, back when we were both in the trenches. And so thank you so much for everything you've done for our community, Atlanta. Thank you. Uh, we are now going to, I'm going to throw it to uh, Maria Hinojosa because I know she has to um, get off by 930. So I do want to turn her over to you, Maria. Everyone knows Maria Hinojosa. She really needs no introduction. She has been an Emmy Award winning journalist at the forefront of so many of the issues that are important to our community. And so, Maria, I would love to know from your standpoint, from the view of uh, a journalist and the media, um, how groundbreaking is this? And how do you see the media? I know this is going to, you know, this could be like a topic for a five hour seminar, but how do you think the media is going to approach this and what can we do to make sure that she's covered fairly? 
first of all, thank you so much to my tocayas, to Maria and Maria Teresa. <laughs> it's so great to see you. Um, and to Catherine and Ingrid, obviously, when you ask, everybody just says yes. And to Nidia Velasquez, who I've known for a very, very long time, and to everybody who knows me, what's up, what's up, what's up? Um, it's great. Hello, Janet. Hello, Rosario. This is like, what's up? It's, uh, it's great to see everybody. Um, Rosie, fabulous as usual. Hilda, placer. So listen, I, I just have to be very honest because you know that's how I feel. I've never in my life done anything like this. Catherine and Ingrid know I don't go to fundraisers. I don't participate in fundraisers unless I'm reporting about them. So this is a kind of extraordinary moment. But just to emphasize, we are living through a fascinating moment in political history in the United States. And as far as I'm concerned, Latinas following in the footsteps of black women, right? How we move is going to determine our democracy. So that's what I'm fascinated in watching. Um, I, I think that as opposed to what happened in the coverage of the campaign of Hillary Clinton that was riddled with misogyny, deep misogyny, uh, it's a very different moment. We have, you know, lived through the murder of George Floyd and the uprising of the Black Lives Matter movement. We have lived through so much the pandemic. It's a different time. And what I will agree with what Joe Biden said, President Joe Biden said in his speech tonight, is that ultimately it's up to all of us. And in terms of the journalist, you know, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. That's not my role. What I will tell you is that the democracy depends on what we do whether you have the capacity to vote as a citizen or whether you're someone who has a green card or someone who's undocumented, everyone can take part in our democracy. It goes beyond just the voting booth. And let's just savor this moment. The big question that I'll leave for you and the reason why I want to jump off is because as long as I'm on this call, then everything is kind of for me on the record. And I don't want you to feel like you everything that you say is on the record. I want you to have the freedom to speak freely without a journalist um, listening in, as it were. The central question, right, and we've lived through this before, all of us who have been on this call. When Barack Obama was put up and everybody said, oh, but will Latinos vote for a black man? And I knew, of course, when my papa, who was from the south side of Chicago, may he rest in peace, but he was like, no, I'm down from Obama. I was like, absolutely. The question now is, will Latinos and Latinas vote for a black woman? That is the central question. I actually believe that history is going to prove what has already happened, that the turnout of Latinos is actually going to be the essential part of the vote that gets Kamala Harris over the top. But all of that ultimately is up to you, which is why I wanted to be here for just a moment to witness this. I, I'm just like, it's mind blowing, it's extraordinary. Um, and I'm so proud of everybody believing in their voice and their participation in democracy, especially as Latinas. So thank you so much for asking me to speak. Really, I just wanted to just kind of listen in, but I love being here with everybody on this historic moment. I'll stay on for just a few more minutes and then I'll sign off so you all can say everything that you want to say. But honestly, what a moment in history, it's just, um, extraordinary and thank you for the latinas who organized this because you're just showing us this is how it's done it's not that complicated this is how it's done so great to see you all and send all your story ideas to me obviously <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you teed it up for us maria so one of the things that we're seeing is we're getting tons of questions and we're not gonna be able to answer all of them but what we do want you to know is that after this, what we're going, uh, we're getting your suggestions, what you guys need, what kind of toolkits. So expect something either tonight or tomorrow, more likely tomorrow, but we'll give you a whole list of how to sign up. But I want to do a special shout out because I saw someone from Southern California who says that she is already donated, she is already volunteering, and she wants to know how she could work with local organizations at the local level in Arizona specifically. So. If you're looking for Arizona, Lucha Arizona is fantastic to do door-to-door. -door -door. Mi Familia Vota, Unidos USA. We have great, great partners on the ground. We're happy to share with you maybe some of those resources as well of how people can focus not just working at the national level with the campaigns and volunteering for the campaign, but where are those states that could be very critical. So we'll have some uh, more of the information there too. But I also want to point out uh, a question from Olga Diaz. 
I'm a Latina in rural Wisconsin. When will the Democratic Party visit small towns where voters have been ignored? State party staff are critical and very critical here. Listen to the Latinas and find the people in places that need more representation. We want Kamala. I ask that, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm letting Olga right now because I know that the idea of how do you organize in rural America is not just important for Wisconsin, but so many parts of the country. And one of the representatives that I have a chance to constantly talk about, talk to about, who always is central about making sure that in the middle of all her conversations, she's not forgetting rural America, is our next guest. And I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to better understand the work that they're doing, because it really is going to be, I think, transformative. We saw the work that she's been doing already in New Mexico, but I do think, you know, um, Representative Teresa Langer Fernandez, I want to bring you in, because I want you to ask you, how do you organize so effectively in ruby red, you know, in a ruby red area of New Mexico that does address what Olga's asking for, how to mobilize in rural America? It is showing up. It is always showing up, and the way everybody is showing up, I am I'm running in and out of the United States Capitol because we are voting, and we are voting on an on a resolution that condemns our wonderful Kamala Harris uh, as you know for the border policies. Now we know they brought that because they are afraid. They are afraid of what her candidacy represents because it represents a look to the light. It looks at loose and best the you know fear right we are going for light we are going for energy we are going for hope and those are things that resonate i think in rural america i think rural america is tired of being ignored rural america wants you to show up and in new mexico we have uh, uh, uh we have amazing organizations as well we have somos uh, and we have lots of different organizations on the ground reach out uh, to me at, at Teresa Leder Fernandez, Teresa for all, look us up, because what we do is we show up and we talk, we get on the radio, I get on Spanish radio, we show up and we knock doors, and I need to tell you so often, we knock on those doors, and we are the first ones to have knocked on those doors. And the reality is Democrats deliver for rural America under President Biden, Kamala Harris, and the Democrats in Congress in the 117th, the largest investment in rural America since the New Deal, and this benefits Latinos. We need to recognize that across the Southwest, Latinos are in our rural areas, and we are gonna show up for Kamala Harris the same way that she has shown up for us. And so thank you for that question. I'm gonna run back in and vote. And vote thank you for no. all that you do. <laughs> So Bye, you. So thank you. Not thank now. you so Go much, down. Congresswoman. Um, yes, go fight. We need you there. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, I, I'm going to now go over to one of the highest ranking Latinas that we have in the White House. We are so proud of her. We're so proud of the amazing work that all the Latinos are doing at the White House, at the campaign, in all of the places where it matters just so, so much. But I'm gonna turn it over now to my dear friend, friend of everyone on this call, and somebody who you might not see her in the media or hear about her on TV, but she is pushing those levers. She is fighting for us. She is knocking down those doors, um, and she is making those decisions that really, really matter. So um, it is my pleasure to be able to turn it over to our dear friend, Emmy Ruiz. Emmy, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Let us know from your standpoint of where you sit. What is the best way to move forward? You have so much talent on this call right now. What do you need from us? Thank you so much, Maria. It's just so nice to be here with you all, uh, with this incredible community of amazing Latinas. Uh, I'm so proud to be here. I am here in my personal capacity, uh, not in my, my day job day job, uh, but I'm so happy to be here. I will tell you, um, as somebody mentioned, you know, we just heard from the president and we're all incredibly proud of him, but also it just brings me so much joy to see how much he has the vice president's back and how much he's working to elevate her and make sure that we continue the progress of the last three and a half years. I think, look, I think the most important thing that we can do is stay united in this moment 
because right now we are at a very high point where we are coming off of 72 hours of incredible energy, of grassroots fundraising, of unprecedented a number of volunteers that are showing up to campaign offices, of you know uh, staff that want to work on the campaign, of validators, of surrogates. Make no mistake, the Republicans and MAGA Trump are going to make this an incredibly difficult race. This is going to be a close race. This is going to be very, very, very difficult. And so every single thing that anybody on the Zoom can contribute, I'm not just talking financially. I'm talking about some of the questions that others have asked about volunteering, about getting involved with local organizations, about joining your local campaign, about whether you're in a Democratic district in California and driving to Nevada or to Arizona or going to a rural community where many of us are from, every single thing that you do will make a very, very big difference. It is as simple as you going on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram and saying that you support the vice president and why you support her, right? That is very, very important to you in this day and age. And we have to remember what it is like to build community. This is not going to be an election like we looked at in 2020. This is going back to the nuts and bolts, knocking on doors, making phone calls, registering voters, leaning on one another, and making sure that the, for the next 104 days, we are relentless. We are relentless in our organizing and every single thing that we're doing out there. And so I look forward to seeing you all on the campaign trail. I look forward to seeing the incredible work that you're doing not just for the vice president, but for Latino and Latina candidates up and down the ballot, because the only way, um, the best way that we can set up the vice president for success in her first term is to make sure that we have a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate. Then from there, it is game on in what we can accomplish for the American people. And that's a really, really beautiful thought. So thank you all so much for your incredible support. I thank you for everything that you're doing for the vice president. Thank you for everything that you did for the president. Um, and all we have accomplished in the last year and a half years. Now it's time to finish the job. So, I mean, I want to thank you so much because you have been such a star of, of Latinas. And I know that you have such an incredible reputation in Washington that when there is a job availability, you're always saying, who's the best talented woman I know? She's Latina. So you have done such a wonderful job changing the behind the scenes. But I also want to ask you, there's a lot of people here with a lot of questions on uh, on the vice president's policy positions moving forward. I know that they have not been unveiled yet, but I do want to recognize that there's people are asking, when can people start start expecting that some of those positions? I mean, look, I think imminently. So I think that there are a few things that you can point to that we should all be pointing to as it pertains to the vice president's positions. So one is the accomplishments of the Biden-Harris administration um, and the unfinished work of what we've talked about, right? I, I will give you a few examples of this. The president has always stressed they are partners in every single thing that we have done, and that is the case here. The president and the vice president are the most pro-union administration in history. They are fighting not just for, you know, uh, jobs, but good-paying jobs that really restore the dignity of being able to provide for your family. That's one big chunk of it. Every single piece of research that we see, I mean, talk to your family, talk to your cousins, et cetera. Setting costs is at the very top of the line for people, for Americans in this country. And that includes taking on big corporations, making, making sure that they're paying their fair share, making sure that they're lowering costs, that we are tackling what we refer to as free inflation here because they're making more money, they're charging more prices, and guess what? That is not going to their employees, that is not going to their taxes that they're paying, so it's time that we hold them accountable. That's a big part of that. Housing uh, is another big part of that, and some of the policies that we have laid out on the stuff. Uh, the Vice President, uh, in the last three days, as she's been on the stuff, has also been talking about everything from the care economy uh, to our unfinished work um, in areas like immigration. And what I, what I also want to say is, like, it's really important, um, and we can work with the campaign to share this, to go back to the fundamentals and the core of who Kamala Harris is, right? What is the work she did uh, when she was attorney general, when she was district attorney, when she was U.S. senator, how she provided, how she fought uh, for dreamers, for unaccompanied minors as it pertains to immigration. And so we have a real story to tell here in what she's been able to do and what she's been able to secure. Um, and we are truly on the cusp of being able to unlock, I think, generations of progress, right? 
faith and built off of the foundation of what we've accomplished under President Biden, uh, what a President Harris will be able to do uh, will be just absolutely incredible. To answer your question, it's coming. We're working on it. I would also just point to the President's um, 100-day agenda from Detroit about a week and a half ago. That was essentially their agenda, and so I don't know that it's going to steer very far from that. Cutting costs, taking on big corporations, from big pharma uh, to those that are not paying good wages, you know, more more resources, more benefit, more taking care of the little guy. Thank you. I mean, I know that that was a big question, but I know that you've also been all only in the seat for less than 72 hours. And what a big bang you have done. So thank you so much. And we will definitely be in touch. Uh, we will continue fielding these questions. But I have to say, the excitement here is very real. And you're bringing the energy. So thanks, Emmy, for all that you do. Go squeeze thank your you, little Emmy. ones. Working mommy. Go squeeze your little ones. <laughs> So, uh, and so, you know, as we see it, I can say, you know, we have 3,600 folks on the on the call, and again, people are asking where to volunteer, where where they can actually buy merchandise. I love that. I want to know where we can buy merchandise, Maria. I don't think we know yet, so we will figure it out and we'll send it to you. This we'll let gets, everyone know. Right. This is completely on the fly, and we're so grateful for your graciousness as we figure out what is the best rhythm. But I want to welcome someone that, again, I would say, you know. But yeah, it's, it's all like, it, it's all my heroines, all these women breaking glass ceilings that are joining us tonight. Uh, it's this really is special. historic, Maria <laughs> Thinnes, it's amazing. We're so lucky to have everyone here. Uh, but I think it speaks to the energy that Kamala has sparked, right? Uh, so I want to introduce uh, the governor from New Mexico, Michelle Grisham, uh, Lujan Grisham, who again has broken glass ceilings, but also brings other women with her. Uh, Talk to us a little bit about what you are seeing. I know that before uh, Harris was was on the ticket, people were nervous about New Mexico. They thought that there might be fault lines in, in New Mexico and in Virginia. States that we thought were very secure seemed all of a sudden not so secure. Talk about what you're seeing now, Governor, with, with this transition, with this possibility. Doesn't matter how many times I do this. I think it's actually Ingrid and Catherine who are always trying to mute me. And that's what happens <laughs> when you've got a Latina and a mentor that's actually from New Mexico. That's how they roll. Or it could just be that I'm a digital uh, immigrant. Uh, look, I love this call. And I love the power of so many women uh, because I'm going to go backwards and then forwards. I just finished uh, All Women. It wasn't our intention, but it's where we ended up. All these young women as interns in our office. And so it's the official side. So I'm not talking to them about any of these political issues. And uh, some of them aren't going to be 18 in November, so they're not going to be able to vote. One is. And they're asking questions. They're enthusiastic. They're excited. And they realize what's at stake for America. And the point I make to these incredible young women and women everywhere is the future, not just of the country, but of the world, largely rests in women's hands. It's women who will lead through and change the conflicts. It's women who will set a new course for climate and climate change. It's women who will deal with an economy that's fair because it's not been fair for women. And who is it most unfair for? Well, women of color uh, and Latinas in particular. So look, we, we know what's at stake. And we know that the momentum builds behind a woman. So here's what I see now on the ground. I'm seeing young people starting to perk up. I'm beginning to see businesses who are worried about equity, these small businesses that, to your point, in sort of our Emmy's point, to the greed in America, they get swallowed up and destroyed. These are the folks that are the backbone of the party, that are the voters of today and tomorrow, who are feeling for whatever reason, and, we, and I love that no one is doing that, uh, Joe Biden, an incredible leader, incredibly selfless, who we needed in those moments and in this moment. But when people are feeling like it's unfair out there, and when they're anxious and worried, they don't vote. And they turn that anger if they don't vote into something even worse. 
voting against their interests. So it's too early to tell you uh, uh, where we are in New Mexico, but I can tell you this, I got a lot more people driving their cars with their foot on the gas, including <laughs> me. And uh, that enthusiasm, that's what you need. If you don't have it, it's such a heavy lift. Uh, and then I want to, uh, you've got so many incredible people and speakers, but I want to remind, I'm watching some of these questions. You know, all of us have these questions. Housing, the economy, raising your children, education, equality, protection, freedom, women's rights, immigration, asylum, support for refugee families, mixed status families, all of it, all of it needs to be addressed. I want someone that I know knows how to do that. And I'll tell you on the small business side and on the economy, you want a former DAAG that's held big corporate America accountable. I'll tell you what, that's what I want in this moment. But New Mexico is embarking on something that no one thought could happen here. And it's Joe Biden and Vice President, soon to be President Harris. And it is remarkable for a poor state with generational poverty and generational hundreds and thousands of years of risk. We are the only state in America where daycare, childcare is a constitutional right. Today, if you are at 400% of poverty, completely free. If you're above 400% of poverty, not completely free, but no real co-pays, no co-pays. And by the time I leave office and maybe in just one year, no New Mexico parent will be paying for five-star high quality childcare anywhere in the state of New Mexico. Nowhere else in the country is that happening. We are raising the salaries of our infant and toddler and our early childhood education folks. So that's pre-K, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, they're gonna have salaries that look like the huge increases we've given to educators. No more, you know, states still paying minimum wage. We're at about $22, $25 an hour. Well, we want real career salaries, not hourly wages. You all of our education three and four year olds universal we're fixing navigation we did a moonshot of investment in uh, k through 12. we have free college two-year four-year trades part-time anytime anywhere there is no place in america that is creating the kind of opportunity for families raising their children and how did we get here the investments of Vice President Harris. That's how I got here. And so it was the COVID uh, investments. It was the transformational investments in infrastructure. And you take a poor state with 2 million people that is gangbusters proud about where we are and where we could go. And we're going to transform New Mexico families. And in one generation, I submit to you that we'll be a kind of powerhouse here that no one in America can get close to. But we ought to be leading the way. So my message for everyone with these questions, nobody thought that could ever happen anywhere in America. Constitutional right to childcare, impossible. Affordable housing, impossible. Uh, uh, wage equality, impossible. Uh, robust reproductive freedoms, impossible. Not impossible. Possible with this president. The vice president will be our next president if the Hispanic and Latino Latina community gets out there and votes. And frankly, every Latina, although I want those men, I I don't say that very often, I want those men, but I want those men, I want them. If every Latina, every Hispanic woman votes, we win this election. The women can determine the outcome. And it's not because we're voting for another woman, it's because we're voting for a proven leader who has the experience, the wisdom, the compassion, and the ability to keep moving the country forward. So I'm so excited to be on this call because I'm looking and staring in the faces of such incredible leaders all across the country. You motivate me every day. And I feel in my bones like I can deliver with you, New Mexico, and in the same way we deliver the rest of the country. So uh, y'all, which is Texas, don't tell anyone in Texas, I just did that. Si se puede. I am on this and so are you. Thank you so much, Governor. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing, all the glass ceilings you're breaking and all the amazing work that you do for New Mexico and for the country. So muchas gracias.
I'm going to now turn it over to our fierce sister uh, who is always defending us on TV. Um, I have been working with her at CNN for years. She does it on CNN. She does it on The View. She does it on all of her social media posts. Ana Navarro, thank you so much for being here with us um, and for uh, sharing your wisdom. I want to pose two questions for you, though. We have in the chat several people from Florida, and they want to know if the VP can be competitive in Florida. So I would love for you to take that question. And then obviously, you know better than many of us, though all of us kind of have been in that position, the Republicans are going to go after her hard. What are the best two or three um, pushbacks on these horrific memes that we're seeing from the other side? Go. Hi, everybody. And I'm going to be very brief because I actually have CNN in a little bit. Um, okay, on the Florida question, no, she's not going to be competitive in Florida, so let's, I'm not going to waste time and energy and resources on high in the sky. She can make a difference on the uh, amendment issue regarding abortion. I believe she can make a difference on that, but we know what we have to do. We've got seven states that matter. We have got to figure out how do we make a difference in those seven states. Now, things that I think we need to do, and I think we need to do them quick. First of all, this call should be a weekly call. I don't know which of you needs to yep, make that happen, but we need Done. to stay engaged. Done. We're doing we need it. We stay energized until for the next 100 days. We need to clap back, fight back, right back when it comes to defending her. I think that in 2016, we were caught in surprise by how low uh, Donald Trump is capable of going. Yeah. In 2024, nobody should be taken by surprise. Remember, this is the guy who showed up with Bill Clinton's girlfriends. What do you think? There is no law that they will not stoop to. And we have already seen it. I mean, Hillary Clinton faced terrible misogyny in 2016. That's going to pale in comparison to what Kamala Harris is going to face because she's a woman of color, because she is, because she was single until 10 years ago, because she has no children. You name it, they're going to go after her. For, uh, for for those reasons. And I think if we have a lesson learned from 2016 is that we don't need those things unanswered. We have to be this and we have to be out there and we have to be answering each and every one of those charges. If they go low, I'm going way low. And <laughs> another thing is, listen, we have seen uh, what they're trying to do. Like they're, try they're trying to tell black people that she's not black. Mm -hmm. And then they're trying to tell white people that she's gotten everything she's gotten because she is black, right? Because she was vice president, was picked vice president because she's black. So I, I mean, I can't figure out how both of those things can be true at the same time. I am sure they're going to try to divide us from our black sisters and brothers. I am sure they're going to try to pit us against each other and tell us that because she is black, the Latinas don't matter. We cannot allow that. We have to build an a, 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 a alliance with the Latinas, with the uh, Blacks, with the Whites, with everybody. We have got to be together and not let them penetrate us in that way because only united can we get through it. And listen, Kamala Harris, I think the other thing we all need to do, a lot of people don't know how. They're going to try to define her as, you know, a horrible thing. But a lot of us on this call do know Kamala. We have worked with her. We have interacted with her. I first met her six years ago, seven, eight years ago, when she first became um, senator. And I loved her at Hello. She she loves to cook, like so many of us. She likes to drink tequila, like so many of us. <laughs> she cusses. Like, I remember hearing her get asked one time if she knew any words in Spanish, and she said, yes, pendejo. <laughs> <laughs> When I come in here, yeah, I'm very happy Wilson just lost pay. it. Wilson just lost it when you said that. <laughs> so, that was going to be very useful when it comes to dealing with Donald Trump. Yep. So, so you know, and then I remember, you know, and I shared the story of two and a half years ago when my mom died and she called me and she walked me through the grief. She held me and she raised me through the phone and spent 45 minutes with me. I felt terrible. I didn't, there were so many different feelings. And so she's got that compassion, that empathy, that human touch. And look, I know there's a lot of policy questions. This is what I'll tell you. We don't have time to get into the weeds right now. We really don't. We can figure that out once she wins. 
and we we need to be part of those conversations. What I can assure you is that there is not one single issue we care about. Well, except for the really rich ones, maybe the taxes. There are other than that, there is not one single issue we on this call care about that Donald Trump is better than Kamala Harris. Mm. Not one. Not reproductive health, not climate, not the border, not immigration, not one of them. Not a single one. So that's what we have to focus on. It's a binary choice. So we need to stay engaged. We need to fight back and clap back at the misogyny and the, and the racism. We need to stay united with our other allies in this and be one united front and we need to keep our eye on the ball. This is a binary choice. We don't have to agree with her on everything. I don't agree with me on everything. That's our focus. Con eso, las dejo, las quiero, mucho beso. We need to heal this time of yours. <laughs> Go order it on deck. Oh, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. We'll, we have recipes and we'll share it with everybody. <laughs> for the next call, done and done. <laughs> All right, bye guys, and thank, thank you for joining us. Guys, just break away, represent us well. Folks, we still have so many people that we haven't heard from, and I want to make sure that we, and Lydia, can you believe this? It's been almost an hour. Amazing. And we still we're have now, so I think, 4,500 people for this call. <laughs> Amazing. So I want to be, you know, I want to be mindful of everybody, but I have to say that something that really stands out here is someone's asking, Cynthia Romero is asking, por favor, necesitamos más información en español. Nuestra comunidad necesita traducción de alimentos esenciales de Proyecto 2025. So Cynthia Romero is talking about how we need more resources in Spanish, specifically breaking down Project 2025. We are making notes. We will be working uh, with, uh, in this case, Voto Latino has all these cheat sheets that we can go ahead and translate and we will send those out to you. We make them into fun graphics so that you guys share it far and wide because you're absolutely right. Everything that we're doing for our English speaking community, we have to make sure that we're also doing for our uh, Spanish speakers. I wanna be able to, you know, the reason we are really here tonight is uh, because of Representative Miriam Velasquez. She was very clear. She called, uh, she's called Ingrid and called Catherine and both of them called me and they're like, once a staffer, always a staffer. And I had to raise my hand. <laughs> so Miriam, talk to us a little bit about uh, what you're seeing right now in New York, because oftentimes, you know, some of the folks here on this thread are saying, you know, I'm from California. We're not really a swing state. What can I do? People can say, well, New York is kind of the same thing. I'm not really a swing state. What can I do? What can we do? Well, right, right. Well, let me just say, it, it is so great to be here on this call. And thank you for for being here on this space. Uh, Michelle, it's so great to see you. Hilda, wonderful. Rosie, Perez, you're always there for the community. And Ingrid and Maria, and Catherine, thank you so much. Janet, all the work that you're doing is so important. But let me just say this, uh, you know, and Maria and Catherine, thank you so much. Janet, all the work that you're doing is so important. But let me just say this, uh, you know, you know, November. And so uh, New York might not be a battleground state, but who decide who will have the majority in the House? So therefore, we need to do a lot of organizing. And in many of those uh, districts in upstate New York, there are large concentration of, of Puerto Ricans and Latinos. So the Harris campaign have to keep that in mind, that a message that has to be catered to the Latino community. Um, and yes, Project 2025, every time that we say anything about Donald Trump, we have to attach Project 2025 and explain to our community the impact that it's going to have uh, in for, for, for the people in, 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 in the country. Uh, you know, it's about cutting social security, Medicare is going after immigration, um, uh, migrants is really fine, the migrant community. So I am so excited. And let me just say that in Congress, 
what a difference a, a, a weekend made. Uh, we came back and uh, I see the excitement and grassroots voters are energized and this call makes clear that Latinas are motivated to elect uh, Kamala Harris and she has the, the vision and the experience to win in November and there is no one better equipped to call this convicted felon adjudicated rapist every time that he lies before the American people. And um, I, don't, I don't have to convince anyone that she is the right fit and that this moment has found her. And we have to do our job in organizing our communities, in talking to uh, young voters in our communities. But I do see and I heard today that there has been an in incredible amount of young people uh, registering to vote in the last 48 hours. So um, what else can I say? You know, we have, the, it is about the message, it's on the issues, and explaining not only uh, Medicare, Medicaid, but the most important thing is the freedoms of every American is on the line. Mm -hmm. Reproductive freedom is on the ballot. Social security is on the ballot. Medicare is on the ballot. And immigration policies is on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Gracias, Lydia. I think Thank that everything you. that you're saying is absolutely right. Maria. Yes, thank you, Congresswoman. Um, that is exactly right. And we need to take Project 2025 um, as seriously as if our lives depended on it, because you know what? I see it. Our lives depend on it. Our livelihoods, our families. So thank you, Congresswoman, for everything that you're doing. I want to now turn it over to a wonderful friend of the community, um, of all of the civic issues that are important to us, um, Rosie Bettis. Uh, is not only a star that we all love uh, and uh, appreciate whenever we see her on screen, but she has really taken her fame and used it as not just for her voice, but she's given voice to so many people who have none. So Rosie, I want to turn it over to you. Hermana, thank you so much for everything that you do. And I want to ask you a question because we've talked about so many of the issues that are important to us in this campaign and, and issues that are that uh, the vice president has been so vocal about that we all hear about, such as reproductive women's rights, immigration, protecting our democracy. Yes, all of those are top of mind. There's no question about that. But the economy is one that we also know is incredibly top of mind because we all go to the grocery store when we're making comida para la familia and we feel it. Talk to us a little bit about what you think is so critical in this discussion about the economy moving forward in this election? Well, it's just during the uh, Clinton administration when the um, now iconic phrase is, it's the economy, stupid. You know, it's the bottom line that people are really worried about. It's their pocketbook. And the thing is, is that there's so much propaganda out there that we are doing terrible and we are not. Right. And we have to really push that forward because what Joe Biden has done and Vice President and suitably President Kamala Harris has done has been wonderful for our economy. We're doing better than any other country since COVID. Um, what he did with this, uh, uh, the stimulus checks, the, uh, the American Rescue Plan during COVID, it helped us a lot. The Inf Inflammation Reduction Act helped us a lot. If you put the numbers be by, side by side with Trump, what Trump did to the economy and what Biden has done to the economy, it pales in comparison, and we got to get that message out. And I also want to say, there was a woman on the, um, on the chat, her name is Crystal Austin, and I was so impressed with what she said. She said, I am a black woman here to support my Latina sisters. Hello, let's go! You know, that is so amazing. It's what Anna Navarro was alluding to. We have to come together. Yes, let's have our little niche, but let's support other 
groups as well. We should be on the call when the African American women are on the call, when the Asian American women are on the call, when the white women are on the call. We should all come together, just like Wilson Cruz is here on our call here too. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that volunteering is the key. It's the key, the door to door, knocking on doors, convincing people to register to vote, um, volunteering to be a poll worker. There's so many things that we can do and we just can't give up. We did it before and we could do it again. We can beat Donald Trump. It is imperative that we just get on fire. And I also want to talk to everyone out there that was hurt by the exit of, the selfless exit of Joe Biden. I understand your pain. I cried too. I cried today when I saw his uh, presidential address. And, you know, he was a great, great president. He still is a great, great president. And he's an amazing president for passing the torch. So don't get down, get up. And you are still supporting Joe by supporting Kamala. We have to push that message forward. And we have to understand that people are, are still hurting a bit. But you know what? Put your big girl pants on, ladies, and let's <laughs> go. Let's go, you know? And I, you know, I had to fix my makeup before I came up on here too, you know what I'm saying? You know, but get out there, you know, talk to your heart, from your heart when you knock on doors. You don't have to know everything. Uh, this, these ladies here will, will work with you and help you. Um, I had the uh, immense pleasure of working side by side with Congressman, woman, uh, Nidia Velasquez during the Obama campaign. That lady taught me so much. Oh my gosh, I remember I was so nervous and she looked at me, she goes, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm, I'm just a little nervous. She goes, get over it, let's go. You know? That was in Florida. That, that was, was in Florida. Florida, yes, I was terrified. We were surrounded by angry Republicans. And just to see this woman's fortitude, just to see her bravery and her strength and also her her knowledge of politics, she taught me so much. And I, I urge all of these women who are on the panels, reach out to the women uh, that are on the chats that come here by offering those toolkits, offering assistance and telling them where they can go. And uh, Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, I would like to volunteer if there is a plan in place to go upstate New York. I was there before, I was in a group home up there, so I know the territory very well, and I have friends there, Republican friends there, that are now questioning their vote. They're questioning their vote, and it's all because of the economy and an abortion, so we can change minds. So anyway, that's what I want to say. That's what I want to say. She has just done so many great, wonderful things for us. As we want to understand out there, Latinos are the number one buying market in the entertainment industry. So we know we know how to get out there and spend our money. And we know that our voice can count. It may not count in Hollywood, <laughs> but it can count at the ballot. It can count at the ballot. We have done it before. We have changed the direction of the vote, and we can do it again. All right, that's it. Okay, I love you all. <laughs> Rosie, it's like you were always you, around. You look, you look absolutely fabulous. I think every single, we're gonna all have to step up and do our makeup beforehand. We can do a glam <laughs> session with you. <laughs> um, but you did. You you said this up beautifully because I think that one of the things that we realized in 2018 is that Latinos became the second largest voting power in America. The second largest. We put our heads down, we do the work, and we don't get the headlines. Sure. And now what we're seeing is that there's an incredible enthusiasm among young Latinos. I think uh, someone mentioned how young Latinos, we see a rise in it. I can tell you that we, in the last 24 hours, have registered an additional 30,500 voters. Oof. We, as of this morning, have registered 57,919 voters in key battleground states, because you are absolutely right, Rosie. Latinos care and young people, we, they are the shepherds of the community for their families. Mm -hmm. And it is with great pleasure, joy, privilege, and an honor that I welcome my partner in crime at Woco Latino, Rosario Dawson, who doesn't need an introduction, but who believes in the faith of if you give people the tools and the information, they move mountains. In our case, 
in the Latino community, we've changed maps. Rosario, darling. <laughs> oh my God, I love you all so much. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have been on a lot of Zooms, a lot of calls, a lot of conversations. There's been blood, sweat, and tears shed. Um, this has been really invigorating, and I, and I love everyone speaking to the fact that as of Sunday, we're going to be 100 days out from this election. We're going to see early voting happening even before then. The momentum and the energy that we are feeling right now is unprecedented. Um, and there's a lot of people out there who are really hurting, uh, who've been very scared for a very long time, who've been actually quite traumatized by this election, and are incredibly right, like rightfully very scared about what Project 2025 could be. You know, this is bigger than Kamala. We've got potentially three Supreme Court justice seats. You know, we have, you know, Social Security on the ballot, as people have been talking about, the Supreme Court is on the ballot, Medicare, Medicaid, housing. There's just a lot that's at stake, as people are also talking about what's happening in the Middle East, foreign policy, all of these different things have galvanized a lot of communities. And I feel like a lot of people, and it's terrible to say, it's like bullying works, which I keep seeing online. But it's been a pressure. There's been a pressure from the community, from the Democratic Party, from our leadership, from, from people on the ground who have said we needed a change. And the Democratic Party listened. And for me, that's very provocative because this is a generation that has just lived through COVID and watched the entire world pivot and change. And the things that were said could, are the way that things are and the way that things will always be because it's the way that things always have been saw massive change. And right now in this election, people have witnessed and felt massive change and they're owning it. They feel connected to that. And that is the kind of momentum that, that is gonna to continue to galvanize them all the way up until election day because this is personal for them. They feel like the stakes are really personal for them and their communities, but they also feel very connected because their care, their concern, their worry was responded to. You're not seeing that anywhere else. And that is so powerful. Um, so we want to speak into that in any way that we can, we have to. So we've got some big deadlines that are coming up. August 1st is National Poll Worker Recruitment Day. We need people to be signing up for that. We're seeing very high numbers, you know, as we all see the dangers that can happen and, you know, how frontline they are in the election. But we're also seeing poll workers are signing up again and again because they've had such a great experience. They've learned a lot from the last election. So they've actually done quite a lot to make sure that poll workers are going to be even more protected during this election. So safety, safety standards are up. People are really feeling like this is a great way for them to be a part of it. We've, people have been talking already about volunteering, speaking to volunteers as well and bigging them up. Um, and, and letting them know that they matter because they're literally front lines, knocking on people's doors, going into neighborhoods, you know, and they're not all gonna, you know, be able to go out there with Rosie and Nidia and everyone. So they need to be big up because you can see what it means even to Rosie and Nidia and all of everybody. Like I'm a big fan of preaching to the choir. And oftentimes, you know, you just need to let someone know in the rain and the heat and the climate change with the, with, the, with the things that they're going. I just finished feeding my grandson. People are in their lives. People are stressing. People are worried. People are, the economy that everyone's worried about is what they're struggling through to show up for this election. So you just want to honor people's work and energy that they're putting into. If you can do social, if you can do lives, if you can travel places, you've been talking about North Carolina and Michigan and Pennsylvania and Georgia and all of these battleground states that really need people so if you're there, if you have communities there, if you can talk to them, do not think that that is small. You know, we want to have the Democratic Party and the administration there speaking, but sometimes we're, we're really going to need to reach out because Congress is on the line. And one of the things that unfortunately that we see on the Republican side, they vote for the president and they vote completely down ticket every time. Like they are across the board, super loyal. If they're voting Republican, they're showing up rain or shine and they're making sure everyone down ballot is going to be voted for. We don't necessarily see that on the Democratic side. People vote for the high ticket folks and then they kind of start to trickle down as it goes down the rest of the ballot. And we need people to show up because what's going to happen is we want to not just get her this 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 term. We want to have her in there for 12 years. Yeah. We want to see her there as vice president. We've already seen people vote for her. We've already seen people vote for her in the primaries. Like this idea of even questioning will people vote for her, especially when people made such a big deal about Biden's age. It was very clear that they were happy to make sure that she was in place to take over, God forbid, if anything were to happen. So we've already seen people show up and vote for her. That is not the question. 
It's about how long can we kept can we, like getting her in there because they're they're gonna use every possible way to get around this. The Supreme Court is saying you can racially um, gerrymander and redistrict lines. There, you know, we are we're seeing all kinds of voter purging that is happening. So we need people to be checking their voter registration, even if they voted before, and make sure that they haven't been purged. Because a lot of what we saw going on in Georgia and the shenanigans there is being spread to multiple different states across this country. And especially the Latinos are really vulnerable to that because they're using very uh, similar names to, to, to question people's actual legitimacy to vote in this election. So we need to make sure even the folks who are registered are re-registering and making sure that their voices can be heard in this election. So I can talk, obviously talk about a lot of this stuff. I get very excited. I get very emotional as my grandson is only five months and I want this world to be one where he is not, you know, it's not as people talk about hand wives, handmaid's tale, like 20 project 2025 is very scary. And it's not something that could potentially happen. It's something happening now. The idea of trying to extract um, Trump from what Project 2025 is, when the majority of people from the, you know, are creating it in the Heritage Foundation and the people who are trying to promote it, were all in his, in, his, in his administration. But MAGA, I think, is a really interesting thing to talk about and where you're seeing that we might have some reach because that doesn't necessarily match what MAGA wants. I don't know that every single person who loves Trump understands that potentially under him and a new presidency, they could lose having public schools. I don't know that they're actually be okay with that. So actually letting people understand like what's truly at stake and don't take it for granted that the folks that you feel like are on the other side of this are not available to you. But honestly, we've got tens of millions, hundreds of millions of, of voters out there who are not participating. And this is our chance to reach out to them, especially young people who are seeing something very provocative happening right now. And they're seeing it generationally be something that's moving everyone, that this is like something like they've never seen before. And I'll end with just saying again, you know, Nydia pointed out one of the things that I've seen that was really beautiful is that, you know, we lost out to having a woman be our president because, and a rapist going in instead. Mm -hmm. And since then it's been made very clear who he exactly is. And what I'm seeing is people talking online and going, you know, I cried with my daughter eight years ago. I was there at the women's march to show that this was not okay. And now all these years later, we're signed up to make sure not again on our watch. Okay. So the people are really fired up and we need to keep them fired up all the way to election day and through into the next administration so that we just keep having women, we just keep having <laughs> gems, whatever it is, but let's make yeah. sure that we get everyone down that ticket because we don't want to see uh, Kamala not be able to do what she can do because we've, we've lost the houses. We got to make sure that we, we, we give her that power because she's, you know, <laughs> she's the deciding vote right now. She'll be able to preside over her own election and officialize her own election, which is a beautiful thing. <laughs> but let's make sure that she's got the power behind her to really make the agenda that we want to go forward, go forward. Thank you, everyone. Yes, Thank you so much, Rosario, sister. Thank you for everything you do, not just about the Latino, but with all of your projects and your incredible platform, your incredible voice. Muchas gracias. Te queremos mucho. I want to now turn it over you, Rose, to you. And I love you, Jenny, and I love, you know, the folks that see and her folks that have Jenny, we were out there in Georgia. I appreciate you. Like, you know, go team. Okay, sorry. I, I had that I love moment. you so much. I want to um, I, w I do want to turn it over to um, one of our fiercest and fearless leaders, Janet Murguilla. Again, someone else who does not need an introduction. Janet, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, at Unidos, you are at the forefront of so many of these issues that we've been talking about tonight that are going to be so critical in this election and then in the President Harris administration. And you have walked the halls of power working for President Clinton, being an advisor to him, uh, being an informal advisor to Obama, to Biden, to, to all of them. What are we missing here, Janet? We've been talking about how our community is so fearful about what's coming up and everything that we need to do. But I think one of the things that we have seen in Vice President Kamala Harris is the joy, how she has embraced her own herself, her quirkiness, her personality. And I think for us Latinas, you know, we love this. So talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing as your team goes door to door about that. Sure, thank you so much, Maria. Both the Marias have been dear friends and incredible leaders, as well as Ingrid and Catherine. But let me just tell you, Maria, you referenced me walking the halls of power early in this young Latina's career. Well, 
then congresswoman, freshly uh, elected, Anidia Velasquez, mm -hmm. made it clear to me that we had work to do and we could do it together, always blazing the trail. So just want to do a shout out to Nadia Velasquez, Hilda Solis, the elected women who have been on the call with us today, but so many friends and colleagues. And we see you, Wilson. Thank you for all your voice and all of this. But look, I, I think you're right, Maria. Uh, I think one of the things that has distinguished Kamala is, and we, a lot of us know her as Anna. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in that we know her and the fact that she's a substantive understands the issues the policies that are stake and that she has demonstrated throughout her career whether she's been attorney general a u.s senator or vice president extreme expertise advocacy relentless championing of the issues whether it's reproductive health rights whether it's civil rights voting rights uh, access to health care all of those but as you mentioned there's a certain spirit about her the fact that I think she understands that as a woman, she brings a unique skill set in empathy and compassion, but also a sense of joy that she has in her uh, work. And so this is something that is shared, the excitement for her. We understand that she's going to be a great leader. And I think it's a reminder for us that we should take this election very seriously. The stakes are very high with the issues and the policies that really matter. But we also should bring our own sense of joy and the spirit of really uh, how much we have at stake and, and bring that together so we can encourage our families, our sisters, daughters, all of these folks, mothers who are also invested in this election. For us, uh, I know at Unidos US Action Fund, we uh, understand the issues, but I think you're right. It's her spirit and the fact that we could create history by electing a woman of color that is also a stake when it's embodied in someone who has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to the issues that we care about. So I just wanna tell you, not only am I inspired by the women on the screen, but I've seen the women in the chat who have been weighing in and this reach that we're creating tonight is only the beginning. And I know we're all excited to launch a bigger effort through our individual voices, but also through the collective various organizations that we represent. So uh, for me, I just want to make sure someone who's demonstrating that joy. I want to do a shout out to Cindy and Luis Miranda, because I heard that today they rolled out Kamala Flor t-shirts. And anytime <laughs> we can resurrect the spirit of Selena and remind us of the power of Latinas and who we are. Kudos to Cindy, you and Luis for uh, helping us see in Kamala the spirit of Selena and our Latina, our Latinidad in this incredible candidate and hope we can make history together. Thank you, Dad. Thank you so much, Janet. Go ahead, Maria Teresa, you can do our next guest. I think you're up next, right? All right, I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is free flowing, I love it. Um, uh, up, up again, another one of our wonderful congressional leaders, uh, Congresswoman Norma Torres. And as we all know, we need more of you uh, in what you are doing, Congressman Torres. Uh, because you all break glass ceilings every single day and you not only talk about the issues that are important for us, but you move forward legislation that actually changes our lives. So thank you so much for what you do. I wanted to turn it over to you to see how you are seeing this election, how you are seeing this excitement around um, the vice president, how you see Latinas are embracing her. What else does she need to do to make sure to um, Janet's point that all of our community sees the Kamala Harris that we have seen and known for so long. Absolutely, and thank you um, so much. Um, it's really wonderful to be with all of you, um, great Latinas, um, powerful Latinas on this call tonight. Hey, listen, um, what she needs to do is be herself because Kamala Harris is already 
um, a proven leader, not only at the state level when I had an opportunity to work with her as attorney general and I was a uh, state assembly woman, but as uh, vice president and you know when she was in the Senate, she's, she's done it all. She has proven herself. So it is our turn to ensure that we get behind her and that we turn out the votes that need to be turned out in order to win this. So what is on the ballot in November? You know what's on the ballot? Our bodies, our ovaries, our freedoms, our child care, our future, the quality of the jobs, how we want to be treated, not just as women, but as human beings, how we want our children with disabilities to be treated. That is what is on the ballot. We cannot afford to continue to be the sleepy giant Latinos that are the fastest growing um, population in the U.S., but we do not show our muscle at the polls. So let's get our tias, our, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, everyone, our neighbors, everyone that we know, first of all, register them to vote and then commit to turn out your neighborhood. You know, look around. Our uh, ways, uh, our way of life, our economy, you know, our, our leadership uh, in not just in the U.S., but our global standing, all of that is important. And if we don't elect Kamala Harris in her soon to be announced vice president, I um, I'm really terrified. I'm terrified about what is coming and I refuse to think about it. The reason why I refuse to think about what's coming if we do not elect her is because I am committed, as I commit to you today, uh, to work my tail off to ensure that I turn out the votes that we need to turn out um, to get her elected. So thank you for starting this conversation. I hope that we continue to have this conversation. There's, you know, a hundred and what, 107 days, 100 and something like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, we don't have very much time to put ourselves together, to get our list together, write down our names, and start sharing with those people why this election matters to you as an individual and why they should care about voting and commit to turning them out. Take the day off and go pick them up and drag them to the polls. I won my first election as Pomona City Councilwoman by 75 votes. I broke my ankle three weeks before the election. I rented a wheelchair and I had volunteers pushing, uh, pushing me while I was talking to neighbors and still knocking on doors. That is what it's going to take to win this presidential election. So let's put on our big girl high heels on and let's get out there and, uh, and, and kick some butt. I Thanks, love everyone. <laughs> gracias, gracias, Congresswoman. And I have to say Thank that I'm so proud that you are from California. So I, I, I feel seen. And, you know, oftentimes people, uh, I've, been, I've had the privilege of knowing Pamela from when she was a DA in, uh, in San Francisco. It is where Rosario and I really got to know each other and where we launched Voto Latino at the grassroots level. And what always struck me from, uh, from the vice president is that she always knew herself and was always authentic to her true north. And that was always seeking justice and always seeking equity for everyone. And what folks forget is that then Attorney General Kamala Harris, she is the one that presided over the very first gay marriage in this country. She broke that barrier. She made it with beauty and love but justice. And so it's with that great pleasure and que orgullo that I have had the privilege of knowing her for so long, such a long time, but also que orgullo that I have the privilege of introducing someone that embodies that sense of equity and understanding your true north and yourself and your authenticity. 
with Wilson Cruz. Wilson, I'm such an admirer of what you've always represented. You have never hid who you were, and you've always, if anything, strengthened not just yourself, but so many young people who have been maybe in places where they could not express themselves. You have literally saved lives by being an example. So Wilson, I give you the floor. And you're on mute. <laughs> I did it. It's, sorry. Um, no I more thank tequila you. for you. No, no more. more. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, I am honored to take up a little space on this call uh, as an honorary Latina tonight. Um, thank you to both Marias. Um, Congresswoman uh, Velasquez, pleasure to see you. The last time we were together, we were on the, in, a, in a pickup truck in the back doing a barranda around Orlando trying to get Hillary elected. It's wonderful to see you and thank you for making this happen. Um, I'm thrilled to be here with all of you tonight because for my entire life when I wanted to get something done, whether it was uh, at school or in, a, in an organization or a board, uh, it was always my women of color, Latinas, who I went to to get things done. And this is what we need from you today. Um, and for, for this election. We need you to go out and speak to your families, to have those difficult and awkward conversations. Um, you know, this is personal for me. Um, as Maria spoke, um, you know, the LGBTQ community has been under attack from these MAGA minions and uh, Donald Trump himself for the last eight years since he came on, on, uh, on the scene uh, politically. and. He's really given people permission to um, to speak the worst that they could possibly think of, uh, things that they would have never had said or been allowed to say or in in public um, uh, now are, are are allowed because of because he's given them permission. And you know, I, I am the chair of the board of a of an organization called Glisten, which is um, a national LGBT organization that works to make schools safe for all students. Um, and our students and their parents have been under attack uh, across this country in school board meetings uh, where they are literally trying to turn back the clock to a time when the LGBTQ community was ashamed of who they were and who they are. And we are not going back. We are not going back to a day when young people are in the closet and are fearful of sharing who they are, of becoming their best selves, to living up to their potential. And so what we've been seeing for the last few years is a concerted effort to shame us back into the closet. Uh, Project 2025, as uh, Rosario was saying earlier, um, is frightening. And they keep trying to distance themselves from it. But, you know, it, this, this was uh, the architect of this, this Project 2025 uh, is the Heritage Foundation. The president of the Heritage Foundation is about to release a book. And who wrote the foreword for this book? J.D. Vance, the vice presidential nominee on the Republican side. So they can try and walk away from Project 2025 all, the, all they want, but their fingerprints are all over it. Um, they are trying, part of what they're trying to do is get rid of the Department of Education because they know if they can keep us dumb, they can control us. If they can keep us ashamed, they can control us. Um, you know, they, there, are, there are MAGA minions on the Supreme Court who want to uh, roll the, the, the clock back to a day when marriage equality didn't exist. They've said it out loud. They're telling us exactly what they want to do. And it's up to us to listen to them and believe them and trust them that they are literally working day and night to make that happen. When I say that this is personal, it's not just about LG the LGBTQ community. You know, I have two retired parents who are getting older, who rely on Social Security and Medicare. Project 2025 goes after both of them. I have an 18-year-old niece who just graduated high school who now has less rights than her mother and her grandmother did over what she does with her own body. She's going to college. She doesn't, you know, I, I want her to not life trying to pay off her college bills. I want her to, to live up to her potential. I have a brother who's diabetic, who has, uh, has been able to afford his insulin uh, for the first time without struggling. Um, I need him to have his health insurance, which is also on the line. 
you know, it's existential. This election is existential. If we lose it, every part of our lives will be affected. Um, so uh, I don't want to wake up on November 6th uh, and, and, and wake up to a, a, a different country. Um, the fact of the matter is, is when he says he's going to be a dictator on day one, he means it. And I defy you to find a dictator who decided, oh, I'm just going to give up being a dictator after one day. That just doesn't happen. Those of us who know, uh, who have friends in, uh, from South American countries, ask them how long their dictator stayed uh, in power. So um, I'm here with you today, locking arms, but I have voted for Kamala Harris at every opportunity I've had. I was a, a resident of California for 25 years. I voted for her for uh, attorney general. I voted for her for Senate. I voted for her in the primary in 2020. And I will be voting for her for president in 2024 because I know where her heart is. And I know that we need a prosecutor right now to prosecute the case against this felon who has no love for this country, but only love for himself. And Kamala Harris has always put us, all of us, first. So I love you. Um, I'm grateful for you. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful that you let me uh, say a few words. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to go to bed now because I'm going to come to D.C. and see all of you in the morning. Can't wait to see you all. <laughs> see you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wilson. Hermano, we love you. Thank you for I all you. you do. Uh, and now I, I, want to, <laughs> I want to turn it over to uh, Michelle Villegas, who is somebody who none of this would happen without. She is at the uh, Harris for America campaign, uh, and she wants to give us some information that I think we're all going to celebrate, but she's also going to give us a little bit more of, um, you know, calls to action. What else can we do? What do you need, Michelle? Tell us what you need. Gracias, Maria, and hola, hermanas. It's so good to see you. ¿Cómo están? Buenas noches. I'm, I'm so inspired and moved and excited to see all these incredible Latinas. We had over 3.5 uh, um, K, okay, so 3,500 Latinas from all over the country in the chat today and on this call and it's just the energy is incredible and I'm, I'm so so grateful and so I want to start by giving some really exciting updates about how much money we've raised on this uh, call and how many volunteer shifts we've had and all the fun updates that um, all of you have made possible. So I'll start by saying, um, hot off the presses, we have 931 new donors to the Harris for President campaign. Um, and I saw in the chat that there were some first-time donors. I saw some Latinas saying, I have never donated for a presidential candidate or a political candidate before. It's my first time. And to you especially, thank you so much. And welcome. Welcome to the family. Um, and we have raised um, $90,000 just oh, on this call. So $90,000 in 90 minutes. Um, okay. That is amazing incredible the power of latinas on this call um is so inspiring and incredible and it makes a huge impact on the way that we can run our campaign and how we can do this work and um for all of you who have signed up to volunteer we have 403 brand new volunteer signups just from this call tonight which is huge and all of you organizers in the chat and all the organizers on this call know how impactful your time is uh, on a campaign because there's no better way to get involved um, than to talk to our fellow Latinas, our friends and family, and also our neighbors. Um, so right now, I, I want everyone, um, if you haven't donated or if you haven't signed up to volunteer, if you haven't clicked on one of the links I've been putting in the chat, I'm going to put it in there again. Please use those to sign up and help us and join our campaign. Um, we have been asking. Uh, 
our coalition of women not just latinas have been doing four dollars and seven cents for our 47th president kamala harris and so uh even if you can do a little bit um it really does go a long way and it helps us build a campaign that is um impactful and powerful and ready to elect kamala harris um i just want to take a minute to tell you a little bit about what we're doing on the campaign and to introduce myself, if we haven't met yet, um, my name again is Michelle Villegas Tapia. I am the Latino Engagement Director on the Harris for President campaign. So I am working on doing all of the Latino engagement across the country, reaching Latinos in every corner of our country, in every city, because we know Latinos are everywhere, right? And so I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a first generation immigrant. I came to the United States when I was two years old with my parents. And I am living the American dream. Um, I came here and um, actually grew up undocumented and um, felt the fear of what it was like to grow up in this country with an uncertainty of what you know my life would be here. And thanks to President Obama in 2012, I was able to uh, apply for the DACA program and receive help through DACA and it completely changed my life. Um, and in just, uh, you know, just years after that, I was able to, you know, start organizing. I was able to get a job in politics, my very first job in immigrant rights campaign. And now um, in 2024, I'm so proud um, to say that I'm the first Latina in my family who works on a democratic presidential campaign. Um, and um, because I became a citizen three years ago, this will actually be the first time that I ever get to vote for president. And I'm so proud that I get to vote for Kamala Harris, um, who will be our first uh, woman president of the United States. And I am I hope that that inspires you because I know that that's the story of so many of the Latinas and hermanas that are in uh, the chat and are on the call today. So many of you are saying, it's my first time joining a call like this. It's my first time donating to a candidate. It's my first time volunteering. It's my first time voting um, for president. So it's just like we're all sharing in the joy and the magic of what that means for us and for our country in this moment. Latinas truly are uh, just the future and the present. I like to say that um, because we are really making shifts and changes uh, right now. And so there are lots of ways to get involved. There's a ton of um, information and in those links that we're sharing, but I also encourage you to go to KamalaHarris.com. We do have merch. There's some Madam President merch on KamalaHarris.com. You can also follow um, at Kamala HQ on Instagram, on Twitter, and it's really fun for all the brat summer girls out there. You know, the <laughs> meme, it's all coming together. Um, and you can also, you know, make sure to sign up to volunteer, get out in your field offices. We've got field offices. We have Latino staff across the country in all of our battleground states, lots of different places. And this campaign, especially because it's run by an incredible Latina and Julie Chavez Rodriguez, who you all got to meet tonight, is opening offices in places like Merivale and Nogales in Arizona, right? We've got um, offices in East Las Vegas, and we've got offices in Pennsylvania. We're catering directly to our Latino community. And so I am so excited to get out on the road, to meet all of you in person, to see you on our phone banks coming up, um, and just to win this election together with you all. Michelle, so how many volunteers did you say had signed up? 403 new volunteers. Wow. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's great. Can I ask you a question, Michelle? Yep. Yes, of course, Congresswoman. So we got to be strategic, right? And 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 look at us, especially some of us who are members of Congress that have deep connections with some communities in some of the battleground states. Kamala cannot win Pennsylvania without Philadelphia, yep. Allentown, and I have a history of. 32 years going to those uh, areas. I have not uh, been approached yet, but I know that this is happening. But I'm just telling you, uh, if, if we are here to help, you need to reach out to us. Same thing with Cleveland, Ohio, 
with a large concentration of Puerto Ricans. I used to have an office there. I used to have an office in Philadelphia when I was working for the governor of Puerto Rico. So I was there just two weeks ago with Jill Biden. Use us Absolutely. In, a, Absolutely. in a strategic way. I think you and I are going to go to Allentown. I can see it now already. We're going to fire up Latinas in Allentown. And I think we're opening an office there soon. So some really, really great stuff happening. And I absolutely, I'm so thankful that you are ready to get uh, involved and ready to go. Thank you. Michelle, thank you so much. And I have to say, the fact that you're going to be a first time war uh, voter just warms my heart. It's like you're literally, you are speaking my love language. <laughs> Amazing. But thank you for all that you do. And I have to tell you that I'm a naturalized citizen and there is something, and I came to this country when I was uh, four years old and I still remember the very first time I took my oath as an American citizen. I was nine years old in San Francisco City Hall. And it still is something that is so precious because like my mom said, we chose to be American. And it was, and we feel so privileged to that. And you know, this really brings me to our next guest because first of all, I have to say, my goodness, you guys, we have 2,400. So we have very little folks have dropped off. You have all been here for over an hour and a half. We <laughs> want to be mindful so that we can all wake up very happy tomorrow. Uh, but I wanted, I do want to, you know, recognize someone that has also had a, a new immigrant experience, but has always put it to work, representing the most marginalized among, among us. She is making sure that we are having the good fight, that it's not enough to say, yes, we are hard workers. We know that we work hard. We know that we carry the back of the United States on our backs that our parents do. But it's also important to have dignity and respect and equity and fair wages and to have a voice so that we always feel that we are present and not disrespected. And so as someone who was the daughter of union members, I really welcome a great friend of mine, a strategist, and now the highest ranking Latina at SCIU, Rosales. Welcome. Thank you so much, Maria Teresa, and really thank you to all these amazing Latina leaders who are here and for bringing us into this space. It's just so, so much power and very, very much excitement going on. I gotta tell you that our SEIU members are all in to elect our next president, Kamala Harris, and there's been so much exciting going on right now in this election. And SEIU members, they understand that the most important thing for working people is united behind Vice President Harris. She is the candidate who will fight for workers and can beat Donald Trump. So we know that Vice President Harris will continue to fight for every worker to have the opportunity to join the unions. She has been an incredible, incredible fighter and very strong supporter for workers. You know, just a few examples, especially in what is in labor, she has been standing with workers organizing their unions, including she chaired the first ever White House Tax Force on Worker Organizing Empowerment, working to make home care and child care worker at work accessible, but also affordable. So, and I can just go on and on. We don't have time, but it's been incredible to, to see that our members, they do understand what is at stake. And we in SEIU, we are driving our biggest political program ever to elect uh, Kamala Harris and leaders who stand with workers all down the ballot, just the way Rosario talked about. We are engaging uh, 6 million high opportunity voters in, in battleground states, as we've been mentioned, especially in, in some of these states. And these are working class people of all races who don't always vote. So we are very much engaging that. We know that our votes are our demand for a better future, future and we won't dis be distracted, or we are not gonna get divided by the extreme attacks on immigrants and the right-wing social issues. We know that SEIU, we're gonna be driving to now uh, for workers, because we also know that workers will make the difference in this election and we will make Kamala Harris our next president. So thank you to all of you. Thank you, uh, Maria Teresa. <laughs> thank you so much, Rocio, for everything that you do. Clearly, labor unions will be a critical, critical part of how we get uh, the vice president into the Oval Office. So muchísimas gracias. 
and we are here for whatever you need as well, sister. So again, thank you so much. Uh, next, I want to um, welcome to speak and tell us um, a little bit about what she's doing. Again, somebody who really does not need any introduction, Cindy Benavides. She's been such a great friend, a another fierce advocate, an incredible leader um, for Latinas, for Latinos, for communities who have no voice, um, and she has really helped not just make sure that the uh, Latino families, that their needs are taken care of, that our leaders understand what's going on in these communities, but now she is focused and she is bringing her talents to make sure that we get more Latinos and Latinas elected. And so this, I think, is going to be the crowning achievement for Latino victory. Cindy Benavides, thank you so much for being with us and the floor is yours, my friend. Muchísimas gracias, Maria y Maria Teresa, and Congresswoman Velasquez, and Ingrid, and Catherine, and oh, hermanas, you know how to hang. And muy buenas noches a todas. I am so happy to be here. And I just want to give a shout out to a couple folks because this is how we do it, right? Lourdes was texting me that she's on with her sister, with her, her niece, and Vito a toda la cuatro. <laughs> Victory Board members are on. Todas ustedes están on. Some of you were like texting me on social media. Hey, I just got off of work. Can I, can I jump on right now? So thank you, thank you so much. And shout out to Michelle. To, to Julie and to all of our wonderful Latinas who are leading in the White House and the campaign space. You know, first I want to start by expressing our most sincere gratitude to El Presidente Biden. Latino Victory was proud to endorse him in 2020 and in 2024, y sin duda, es un ejemplo a seguir. Poniendo a nuestro país primero antes de sus intereses personales, mm -hmm. we all know this. You know, in this election, I'm going to share a secret with you and shout out to our board members. In this election, for the first time in its history, the Latino Victory Board also endorsed a vice president. We endorsed a vice president because we wanted to acknowledge the impact that she has had on our country, not just as the first woman, first daughter of immigrants, first black and first South Asian vice president of the United States, but as a dedicated, experienced and prolific vice president. Y no hay duda that she is an ally to Latinas. And that is why on Sunday afternoon, Latino Victory did not think twice before endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris for President of the United States. And boy, are we happy to join so many of you, along with Janet, with T, and so many others, who on Sunday, no lo pensaron dos veces, we were on that bandwagon making sure to have her back. And what I will say is that Vice President Harris supports issues that matter to Latinas. She supports access to affordable health care. She's an advocate for gun violence reform that will save thousands of lives. She stands up for economic justice. She supports environmental protections, which is a key issue for all Latinos. And most importantly, you stand no seven. She's a standard bearer for her protective rights and for women's rights. Mm -hmm. Sabemos el ataque que tienen contra nosotras y nosotros estamos diciendo basta. Uh -huh. Sabemos que a win for Kamala is a win for Latinas. She absolutely has our backs. And we urge you to keep up that momentum of excitement all the way to the ballot box in November. We have to show her we have her back by knocking on doors, phone banking, donating, speaking to everyone we know. And Kamala that was talking about her record like in todas partes, at the grocery store, in the street, in the elevador, hasta en la iglesia. I'm glad that the pastor didn't give me the look, but I was talking about Kamala Harris in todas partes because she is doing the job. And we are, como Latinas, the biggest influencers in nuestras familias, in nuestras comunidades. Y no nos tenemos que olvidar que nosotras tenemos ese poder de influir a otras personas y a nuestras propias familias a que ellos salgan a votar. Entonces, este noviembre hay que darle un chancletazo a Trump y elegir a Kamala Harris como nuestra presidente. Como latinas, nosotros sabemos que lo podemos hacer y lo vamos a hacer. Y, y no, el domingo, on Sunday, and I'm sorry, I, I do speak Spanglish, I had an opportunity talk directly to the vice president and what i told her was estamos contigo kamala and i want all of us to remember that every single day 
wherever we are, we have the opportunity to influence and make sure that we ourselves get others to register to vote and to turn out to vote. Y los dejo con eso. And just shout out to the Latino Victory Team for Kamala Flor um, and just making that a thing. Thank you, Janet, for that shout out. We were definitely harnessing Selena. Uh, Selena. Um, and so thank you, thank you, everyone, for organizing. Y ahora, a seguir adelante. Gracias so much, Cindy, for all of your, uh, for all the work that you do. And we're going to need all of us. And so one of the things that I think that was really an important moment in our power was the collective issue of what women did the moment Donald Trump was elected. What we did is that we started organizing. And it was really through the leadership of the March for our, uh, the, the Women's March that showed the collectiveness of being intersectional, the collectiveness of talking about multiracial agenda. And nobody exemplifies that more than Carmen Perez for the work that she does on social justice, that she does on incarceration. She is fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. I love the hoops. You're gonna have to tell me where you got those. <laughs> but you don't need any introduction, knowing that you look fantastic. I love watching your Instagram post because you do it so fly with the kids on your hips. Here you go, Carmen, and please talk to us. Tell us what can grassroots movements do right now when people are trying to say that people are lethargic? I don't think that's what you're feeling. Talk to us a bit about that. First of all, thank you so much for bringing this group together to inspire us all to move towards action. Like, let's just give a round of applause to all of you who organized this call. I am so inspired. I sat on the call Women with Black Women, and I was inspired, I donated, and ever since Kamala said that she was gonna run for her office, I was all in. And you know, that's a very difficult decision for somebody like myself who works in the criminal legal system, right? Works with people who are impacted by incarceration. My husband is formerly incarcerated, and I'm currently at a retreat in beautiful San Diego. So let's just give it up for San Diego and California with about 200 leaders from the formerly incarcerated community that represent 100 million people in this country. And so what I gotta say is the fact that they are on board. You're gonna hear my son saying mommy, mommy in the back, but that's how we do it as organizers with kids. They show up in the back. But one of the things that there is an opportunity for us to come together with black women, with API women Why? in this moment, there's an opportunity for us to unite. When the we organized the Women's March, we were not looking at titles, we were not looking at egos, we were not looking at who had more status. We were talking about what can you bring to the table? Whatever gift you have, bring that to the movement. And so we're asking everybody in this moment to bring whatever gift they have. If you have money, let's raise the money for Kamala. If you got organizing skills, let's bring that. If you know how to make tamales, bring that because we need food. There is a lane for all of us in this movement right now. It's all hands on deck. We cannot talk about the past. We could only talk about what's now and what's in the future. And I am all hands on deck in this moment. So whatever assignment I need, Give it to me, I am ready. I'm ready to organize, I'm ready to raise some money, and I'm ready to knock on doors. Look, I live in New York City, <coughs> I'm from Oxnard, and you know, I'm a California kid, but I'm gonna be going to Pennsylvania. I'm gonna be knocking on doors. If somebody wants to get on the bus with me on the weekends, let's do it. I work in the 1199 SEIU building. I work for the great, late Harry Belafonte, who taught me what it took to dedicate our lives to this movement. And it's going to take all of us. We cannot talk about who organized the first Latinas for Kamala Hall or for Harris Hall. We cannot talk about who has the better eyebrows or who has better lashes. We cannot talk about who has more money. It's a time for all of us to unite. And the thing is, I am just so grateful to be on this call. I hope was inspired by the black women. I'm always going to take a lead from black women, but I'm just inspired by this call. And it's a moment and an opportunity for us to raise real money. Look, if there's 3000 of us on this call, we all put a hundred dollars. We're going to have enough money to really show people that we are a real voting block. And like Cindy said, you know, there are people out there organizing. Michelle, I'm so excited to see you on this call. There are some, look, like all these electeds who are on here, I'm inspired by you. 
we are here to take your lead. Let's make sure that we go out and knock on doors, that we are showing up every single day. Our voices matter. We are the new largest voting population in this country. We got to make sure that we're showing up, we're showing up. And you know what? If we're spending money on the movies and buying some heels and the red lipstick, let's make sure we're donating to the cause. <laughs> It's going to take all of us to win. So thank you so much for having me. Again, and I'm at this retreat. I know I've been, my hair looks crazy. Like, I'm, I've been beach status. I want to show you the beautiful oh, view. But all beautiful. that to say, I'm here, I'm ready, and let's go. Vamos, Kamala. Let's go. Woo! Caminando con Kamala. Thanks so much, Carmen. That's amazing. You look amazing. You're you're running around. You're walking. You're doing it. It's exactly what we all need to be doing from here until the day we inaugurate the first woman president of the United States. So thank you again for everything. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over to another amazing organizer who has done such important work in the South, in Georgia, in, in the communities that need to hear from us so that uh, we are able to expand the pathways uh, through which Kamala Harris can win. Jenny Castillo, I'm looking at you. Um, and so I want to turn it over to you to take us out with a bang, give us that energy that we all need. We've been on here for two hours and I know all of us were tired, but we're so excited about being in this historic moment. So Jenny, take us out, sister. Thank you so much. Hola, mi gente. I am so honored to be here among such incredible people of my history and pride in Siendo Latina. Y'all are icons, and I am just in awe to have been invited to this stage. My name is Jenny with the G Castillo. I am a Dominican American, originally from New York, and have made the South my home. I have knocked on doors in the cities, the suburbs, and the rural areas in Georgia and across the South. I have made calls, texted, and have Voted. I have been in the movement, I have worked as an organizer, and I have trained organizers across the South, and now I'm working for a nonprofit dedicated to supporting our Southern organizations to get the federal fundings that they need here in the South. The South matters, and we have plenty of amazing Southern groups utilizing the monies from federal dollars from the CARES Act, the ARP, the BIL, and the Biden and Harris administration has seen over a trillion dollars make its way down to our rural towns and our growing cities here in the South. We know one truth. When you invest in the South, it moves and there's progress. And when there's progress and movement in the South, so will the rest of the country move. I am so excited for a future with the Harris administration that will solidify not only progress for the South, but for the US. I told Julie a couple of years ago and some of y'all last night that the slogan we should use is Yamala Kamala. And a little edit to that would be Yamala president. Georgia has been on the mind of the administration. They have visited Georgia a lot and I'm excited to see Georgia mobilize and get this win. In 2020, my girl Rosario Dawson, she came down and we knocked on doors and we made sure that volunteers were fired up and ready to go. And guess what y'all? Georgia showed out and we won. I hope to see all of you, all of those on the call, all of the speakers who have spoken. I want to see you in Georgia in the next 103 days because when Georgia is fired up, vamos Georgia and vamos everybody to get to the polls for Yamala Kamala and make sure that we have our next president in President Harris. Thank you all so much for the opportunity. Los quiero and thank you again so much. Jenny, Yamala Kamala, I love it. My girl, I, I want to right? Yamala Kamala, Yamala Kamala. I Me love it. Oh, Me Yamala Kamala. Yamala Kamala. Me encanta. So, folks, we are, I can't believe this, but we are approaching two hours. Maria, can you believe that? I cannot, and it doesn't feel like two hours. Uh, like I said, we're all tired, but we're also so fired up. So I want to make sure, sure I want to make sure that we give a shout out again to Congressman Media Velasquez. Thank you so much for bringing us together, Ingrid and Catherine. Anytime mm -hmm. you call, I am there. Maria, what an incredible co-host that you've been. <laughs> Love the moderation. Uh, we should do it more often. Absolutely, sister. And we intend to, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we intend to. So you, a couple of things that from really sitting in the chat that I want to do, kind of put a pin on it. One, I think that there's 
people have a lot of questions on policy positions and stuff. As you heard from Julie, they've been on the campaign for less than 72 hours. It's gonna come, we promise you that. And we wanna make sure that you have the resources for volunteering. We're gonna provide you with some toolkits, but we're also wanting to be in conversation and community because this is the fun part. This is the fun part where we could come in and dissect and learn and laugh and remember that the reason we're in this movement, that we're in the work that we do, whether we are the person that is door knocking uh, on Sunday nights or because the person that does this every single day, it's because we love our country and we love our community. And we recognize, even though people don't say it out loud, we know we're American. And we know that the pathway to democracy is through us. So. In the next couple of days, please be prepared. You are going to receive toolkits, and this is not the last of us. I deeply believe that the next time that we do need tequila recipes, how do you take your tequila so that we can spread it around and then we talk a little bit about that? And more importantly, we are looking, we are hearing what you're saying. We do want to start organizing these calls on Sundays uh, at 8 30. We, we will receive information, but as importantly, we want this movement to grow. We had 3,600 women join us tonight mm -hmm. talking about the future that they want to participate in. Everybody raised their hand saying, how can I get more involved? That's exciting. So the next time you, you join us, please bring a friend. If I go not me, I'm going to be my fellow because at the end of the day, it's Latinas who move the mountains and we all know it. Ingrid, thank you so much for, for everything and uh, Catherine for all the phone calls. I will, we will share. We should do the spit takes next time because it was funny, like how he got this involved. Uh, that was this great. was really messy and definitely not 21st century, you guys. <laughs> yeah. We and thank you, me. Maria Teresa. Thank you for everything that you're doing. You were an incredible co-host as well. It was super fun. Me encantó. Nos reímos mucho. Thank you for everything you're doing at Voto Latino. And so, mis hermanas, hasta mañana and get some rest. Porque verdad, Maria Teresa, this is just the beginning. And thank you for the folks that were in the back on the camera, but we're managing questions and all of that. Super grateful for the team. Nate and Amir, shout out to you all. I want, I want you all to know that we we did surpass 110K. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Woo! Fantastic, everyone. They haven't seen nothing yet. Yes. <laughs> no, no, sir. Thanks so much. And That's remember, only a hundred days, we there need to know. get this happen. Yep. Let's Hasta get to mañana. work. Gracias. Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow.